Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now this is the mini member. I've already done part one of the review and I had a bit of fun on the weekend flying this around. Had a ball with it actually. It flies really nicely. I, I kind of like it. The, the big props um, certainly give it a bit of poke and it manoeuvres nicely. I'm getting ready to put the telemetry gear on here with the GPS and the current sensor and all that sort of stuff. And I'm also looking forward to tilting the motors and giving the Naze 32 a command that says it's all tilted at 10 degrees and then flying that, see how it goes, measuring the speed with the GPS. But I had a quite a few encounters with a foam hoop on the weekend and I thought, wow, this is really strong. It stood up incredibly well. And I was thinking, whoa, on the, in the little mini quads broke a few props hitting those foam hoops. So this is really good. It's got some six by four, five props, which I got from High Model and they're quite stiff. And I thought, hey, these props stand up really well. But I want to show you something now. We tend to ignore pre-flights. I remember you get a big model like a jet, you've got to do a pre-flight. There's a video on my X-Jet channel uh, showing an F-15 crashing. It looks like that may have happened because the pilots didn't pre-flight properly. They didn't realize that the pneumatic retracts were not working correctly. And as a result, cost them a fortune. So you've really got to get pre-flights. And with quads, it's also very important because you tend to fly in areas, well, some people do, fly in areas where you would not fly a normal fixed wing model. You might be tempted to fly over a building or a car or even a person, maybe even yourself. So you've got to be 100% sure that your model is safe. And sometimes there are things that happen that you don't notice unless you look really carefully. And that's what I'm gonna show you on this machine. Now, it's, there's nothing wrong with the mini member itself. It stood up to all the punishment really well, but these props, and intrinsically there's nothing wrong with the props. The fact that they got hammered into the ground and into some foam repeatedly is the reason for the problems that I'm going to show you here. Okay, here's the propeller hub on one of the motors on the Mini Mamba. You can see the color of the plastic, just you right in here where it joins the hub, the color is consistent. There's no whitening. It, it's a healthy prop. That's the way a prop should look. We'll go around the other side, look at the other side, see? That's a healthy prop. Now, if we go over to the other side, you'll be able to see what an unhealthy prop looks like. Now notice in this, see the white area there? See how white that is? That is caused through stress. What's happened is during an impact with the ground, this prop is bent beyond the flexibility of the propeller to withstand such pressures, and it's put a permanent structural damage in the hub where the blade attaches. Now, from the top, you can't see that. It's not really noticeable from the top, right? Only from the bottom. And that means that you wouldn't, if you were flying this thing, you know, you'd give it a quick look over, ah, it's all right, go and fly it. And the problem with that is that if this prop throws a blade in mid -air while you're passing over property or people, uh, then you, you could have a really nasty incident and it would not be good. This, as soon as you lose a blade, lose a blade on, a, on a quad of any type, generally speaking, you're in trouble. If you are really lucky, you might be able to get it to the ground. It'll shake and wobble so much. It may peg the accelerometers or the gyros on the flight controller and you'll lose control. But if one blade goes, sometimes the other blade goes, and then, you know, it's flipping and you've got no control. So if this, this, these are light, but if they fall on someone's head, they could do an injury. If they fall on top of someone's car, they can cause significant damage. And if they fall onto top of another, say, house or a tall building, you may never get the damn thing back. So the importance of pre-flight is very, very, you know, is, it, that's, that's why you do a pre-flight, to make sure that you don't fly with damaged props that at first glance may seem perfectly fine. In fact, I think one of the back props is also damaged on this and the black, yeah, it is. Um, so down in here, you can see there's a white mark at the hub as well, where that prop has been unreasonably creased or put to too much stress. On the top, it's not visible because the, obviously the force is upward and it's put tension on the bottom and it's actually stretched the plastic, made it go white. So. Yep, I have to emphasize, have to really emphasize, if you're gonna fly these things safely, you've gotta make sure that every time you take off, they're in flight-worthy condition. That doesn't mean giving it a quick once over, it means making sure, especially props. I mean, props are the real danger point or the real weak link with all these multi-rotors. As soon as you ping a prop, you don't know what's gonna happen next. And of course, carbon fiber isn't necessarily any better. Problem with carbon fiber is that unlike plastic, any kind of stress failures or, imp or real damage may not even be visible from the outside. This is a problem that engineers have had with composites over the years. Is that sometimes the, the damage is internal. Just some of the structures, the fibers are broken internal to the composite and you can't see them. So you really have to be very careful and take care and even have a, a maintenance schedule. If you're doing this commercially, you need to keep a log of how, when the props were put on 
and rotate them out. So because even just normal use will cause flexing and eventually things will fatigue. And when things fatigue, they get weak. And when they get weak, they will break just when you least want them to. So this is a safety video, I suppose. Always check your machine over, make sure it's ready to fly and it's safe to fly. Now, I'd like to hear from people actually, what experiences have you had with the various props? I know there were some gem fans, I think there was a 6.3 gem fans, have been shedding blades like nobody's business without being damaged. I mean, they just, maybe it's because people expect the same kind of robustness from a six inch prop that you get with a five inch prop. But when you increase the diameter by an inch, the stresses go up much more than you'd think. So the bigger the props, the far more susceptible they are to throwing a blade. Go over onto my XJet channel, you'll find a video of a quad throwing a blade, a blade in midair. I think there might even be two of them actually, but you can see what happens when that occurs and just how quickly it happens. One minute, you're fine. Next minute, you've only got three and a half props and you're on the ground. There you go. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been of some value to people. Now it's time for me to get back to the bench.